Hey everyone, you're listening to another episode of the All Things Private Practice Podcast. I am joined today by Erez, uh, a co-founder of Freed.ai, which is an artificial intelligence software company that helps clinicians do their documentation and helps them with their notes, which, you know, if you're listening and you're in private practice, you can probably relate to feeling like notes are the bane of your existence or take up too much time or you are behind on them pretty consistently. So happy to have you here. You're a co-founder of this platform. You also worked at Facebook at one point in time, and you've, you've been uh, a founder of a couple of different startups in the tech world. So thanks for coming on. Please just feel free to tell the audience a little bit about what you do and why you do it, because I think it's important to know the why behind. Why is this a, a founder or a startup for you, and why does it feel important? Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me. So why am I doing this? You know, there are so many stories, but here's a recent one. So this week, my wife, she's in residency, uh, family practice, family medicine. We met just before med school. So she's a big influence on my life, but also on, on this startup. And this week she started a vacation, very rare in residency. On Monday, she has a week to enjoy her life a little bit. And how does she start the vacation? You know, we all know the answer, chatting for the entire day, day, catching up on notes from a month ago, a week ago, inbox. That's how she starts her vacation. And as any other clinician, she really deserves some time off and she doesn't just deserve it. She needs it. It's such a tough job. We all know about burnout. So yeah, that's truly the reason. I think we can help clinicians do better things with their time, whether it's going home earlier or being more present with the patient, whatever they want to do with their time, we're really not here to Tell them what to do. Just let me allow, let me try and help you do slightly better things with your time, not even being forced into the documentation. So that's that's the the one and only reason we we're, we're doing it. Okay, that sounds like a pretty good reason. I think that's probably one that is so relatable to so many people who are listening. Where it's like, okay, I have this practice that I love that I've created, or I'm working at a practice, and although I only work 20 to 24 hours a week seeing clients and it feels like it should be less work than when I worked at my agency job or elsewhere, I am so bogged down with the administrative side of things, feeling like there's always something to catch up on. And it then means that it takes away from personal time, right? Like, because we are a profession predominantly made up of people who don't practice what they preach about self-care and stepping away and taking care of our needs. Um, and then more importantly, it's like, I'm working so much more than I want to be because of the things that I don't enjoy doing, which I don't really know anybody who enjoys doing notes or doing documentation. So if you're out there listening and you're one of those rare people where you're like, I love this. Well, <laughs> you good for you, but ultimately, <laughs> I don't know a lot of people who are like really excited to go to work this week and do a bunch of notes or documentation. So tell us about what your platform does and how it does it. Because if we can, that's one question in my Facebook group that's constantly being asked. Is there a HIPAA compliant way to do notes where I don't have to actually be doing them uh, constantly throughout the week or the month? Right. Yeah. I want to answer that and I do want to, Inject one, one more little story because it really reminded me one of the moments that I knew that this is not only working, but I think life changing for some people is that when we just got started, I got a phone call. I was walking, we have a park next to our house. I was walking in the morning, just like before this conversation. And I'm walking, walking around and I'm getting a phone call. Usually I, don't, I get a lot of spam. Usually for some reason I answered and this someone on the phone, she's yelling like, I have, I have an issue with Frida, so I'm running home try, trying to help her out. And after we fix it, which made me realize how mission critical this, this can be for people, I she was telling me her story. And the story, she started a pri private practice 10 years ago, been doing it, been super hard. Very recently, she, she made a decision, I'm going to stop doing this. It's just too hard, join some bigger practice, you know how it goes. And then she was telling me, I, I saw that's what she said. She said, I found out about Freed a month ago and, and I changed my mind. I'm going to keep doing my private practice. 
So, you know, quite literally life changing, hopefully for the best. I think that's the right thing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but um, yeah, so just the way you described really reminded me of how, how, how oh, it let's, let's pause there. That's such an important point that you just made because there are so many clinicians and mental health professionals who want to step away from their jobs, from helping people because of the administrative side of things. So the ability to free that up and to make sure that that no longer feels like a major burden or stressor for someone and helps them stay in the field, which then has that ripple effect of like helping more and more clients and more people in the community. That's amazing. Okay, continue. Yes. No, yeah, and again, we can just talk about this point forever, but kind of <laughs> going to the nitty gritty. So you asked about, is there a HIPAA compliant way? So certainly, and I one little update from very recently. So we were HIPAA compliant uh, all along from the beginning, but now we also got third party certification. So if you're wondering if something like food and, and other competitors are HIPAA compliant, it's definitely possible. I think there's, I'm seeing a lot, we're advertising on Facebook and we're seeing a lot of people commenting AI, what AI would do with the not AI is really, you know, it's really just a bunch of software doing some math in, in there. Um, there's nothing special that data is not going anywhere special. We can show you exactly where it is. It's being erased after 30 days. So first, now we have a certification event to show you. You don't have to trust me. You can trust the certification of a third party to be HIPAA compliant. <laughs> Um, right. But I think that's an important point. I understand why people are worried about that's like so important. So I'm not, you know, diminishing that. Yeah, I think at the end of the day, the way I view it is that you are responsible to get your notes done for them to be accurate. Um, to be honest, we're not taking responsibility for that. But it doesn't mean that you have to type every letter there and click all the buttons in the HR and spend three hours a day or, you know, that's, that's a, a number that some people spend. Doing that, you can get some help, just like a human scribe, you're still responsible. So um, really the only difference between human scribe and what free does is now it's done with technology, which is quite literally a hundred times cheaper, faster, instantaneous, lends your style. It doesn't quit on you after three months and you have to train another AI scribe. Um, right. So it's really, it's really as simple as that. And I think what I'm seeing recently is that the the market is getting there. So now kind of it's getting to mass adoption, which is great. Again, I think we to date documented more than, I think we're getting close to maybe 3 million encounters. That's 3 million times that someone didn't have to do, you know, go through the pain of another note. And, and, and I see it every day that each, each one of these causes pain. Um, yeah. So not sure if I exactly answered your, <laughs> your question. No, yeah, yeah. No, you answered it. That's That's important to hear. And I think so many people who are unfamiliar with technology or are really afraid of AI in the mental health space, there's some reason to be afraid of it, depending on who is using it and for what. A lot of people would say, well, all these big box companies that I'm not going to mention on here because I don't want to get a cease and desist again, um, <laughs> are using AI to sell client data and they're just purchasing privacy, you know, private information and, and just selling it into the world. But for something that's HIPAA compliant, it sounds like obviously that's not something that would happen behind the scenes with Freed. Right, exactly. And I do encourage people to be skeptical. That's why we got this certification. I don't want to make people trust some random errors guy. Um, but yeah, so I think, and, and it's good to see that people are being very diligent. That's what, especially early on, took us time to kind of build this confidence and you know understand what proof points we need to show. So yeah, very important, but very doable. There's nothing different in AI processing or not than the EHR or you know any other other tool. Totally. So talk talk to us about EHR stuff and integration. Let's say someone's out there and they're using Therapy Notes, Simple Practice, whatever the EHR system is. They decide I want to use Free to help me with my documentation. So what does that process look like in terms of like how quickly? Are we getting these notes done and then uploaded into a client chart on a typical session or basis? Yeah. So, so our entire thesis. So the reason Freed, you know, thesis behind 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 Freed was let's build useful technology for clinicians. Really focus on the clinicians, therapists, doctors, and that was even before the idea was to do charting. When we decided to focus on charting first, it was 
okay, what's the solution? The solution has to be affordable, very easy, no training, nobody wants to learn another EHR, um, and it needs to produce high quality output so it's, so it's useful. So to make all of that happen, our decision, initial decision was no EHR integration. That's the way to keep it simple, affordable. When you go to the integration, that's when things get messy. And free, it works this way today. In a second, I'll talk about the future. So today you get a note within a minute or so once the encounter is done. Uh, it's very comprehensive. Over time, free learns your style. So over time to be the almost as good as the note that you would write yourself if you had the time. And then what people do, they open the note next to the HR and they do depend on the HR, either copy the entire thing straight or sections or kind of take quotes from different places. So there's still some work of charting work, but you're starting from 90%, not 0%. Right. Uh, that's how it works today. We are, I am aware that for me, until we don't um, make it completely seamless that you really have to look at the note, approve it. Um, we're not done. So now we are, and actually this week we're launching the first bet of an integration with an HR. And we did find an approach that seems promising, which is would be very seamless and work across a large number of EHRs and wouldn't force us to charge five times more. It would be affordable as well. Um, so that's coming soon. Uh, I think that but we can talk about which EHR, but that's that's our approach now. And that's coming detail in the coming weeks and months that kind of solving that part of the equation. I would say one more thing about the HR integration. It also allows us to, of course, make it more seamless, but also two other things. Now we can read information so I can make the note, know the history of the patient. Obviously, it would make the note better. Uh, and two, it would allow us to take other actions in the HR, HR later on, like um, orders, inbox management, um, pre-charting, all of these are things that we're of course, want to help with as well, because they are as burdensome as charting itself. Sure. Yeah, I think everyone's probably interested in knowing what the EHR is, but I mean, that's a, if you feel comfortable, if not, that's okay. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's no secret. We're kind of still prioritizing. The first one we're uh, testing now is Athena and then ECW. I know that in therapy, there's a different set and we're looking at them as well. Uh, and right. now we're going to make it generic so it works across many EHRs. Um, sure. So that's, that's, it, that's coming soon. <laughs> and even, a, you know, when you say like, this is going to do 90% of the work, if all I have to do is copy and paste into my medical record system, that's remarkable because it's taking away that time where you literally, I know so many therapists like that don't even have time to go to the bathroom between sessions who don't even have time to eat lunch or get a drink of water because they're so bogged down by the administrative side of their practice. So the ability to take 90% of that away from them and say like, you don't have to worry about this. All you have to do is copy and paste and, and save it into your EHR. That's a major relief for people who are listening because that is a portion of their job where it's just like, this takes the enjoyment out of the profession. And something we hear a lot is that even if you have to do this work, one thing that Fried allows, it listens to the encounter. So it allows you during the encounter to just get away from the keyboard, be much more present. And interestingly, we get feedback from our customers, clinicians, that our patients give them feedback or clients that it's better. So, you know, truly, I truly think everybody wins with this, te with, with this technology. Um, and yeah, just, just <laughs> super exciting. You know, I, I have so many stories I have to share. I have to share them. We have uh, just two weeks ago, we had I always look at our kind of Facebook uh, comments and stuff, what people are saying. They say good things, you know, sometimes not. But this this one guy, I love it. He, he posted on Friday evening, he posted a selfie of himself in the hot tub. And he wrote something like, um, you know, I bought this hot tub two years ago. I never use it. I don't get home, home early enough. And this week I used Twitter and I got home early enough every day to just use my, my, my hot tub. Um, so this is so nice, you know, I shared it with my team and everybody are like, oh my God, we're doing something that heals. We made, we made a really impact on, on someone's well-being. It's a super, super fulfilling. I couldn't be more, <laughs> you can see my face. I'm so, couldn't be so more, more excited about helping clinicians with this. That's awesome. I mean, I love hearing that because, you know, not only do I help clinicians all over the world with their practices, I own a group practice where we have 20 clinicians and 
some some of our folks really struggle with the documentation side. So I'm almost thinking I'm like, when I get off this podcast, I need to get onto the onto Freed and start hooking our clinicians up with this because, you know, if I can make their lives easier, their jobs are more enjoyable, they're less stressed out. It's just a benefit of saying like, I will, most clinicians got into this job or profession to help people. It doesn't feel like you're helping them when you're bogged down by the things you don't enjoy doing. So that's a major plus. Also for our clinicians who are mostly neurodivergent, ADHD, autistic, et cetera, who struggle with executive functioning at times. This is this can be a game changer where they really don't have to overexert their brains or overstimulate their brains and lose track of the things that they're doing throughout the day. So that just sounds like a really wonderful resource in general. Other things with free that I'm not thinking about that are frequently asked questions that come up from time to time. Anything that comes to mind for you? Other questions? Yeah, I think there's a lot. Let me see. Yeah, I think a big one that we're hearing these days is, I think that, so clinicians definitely across specialties, but also just as different, having different ways of practicing, want a lot of, um, different levels of personalization, customization, like this language, like something we hear from therapists all the time and I'm kind of telling the team that just fix it is that it usually uses the language patient and in therapy, folks want to use client. That's the more appropriate term uh, as far as I, as I understand. Um, so something we hear a lot is how, how do we make, how does free become your own? And I think what we're trying to make it so, and, um, yeah, but that just comes a lot when you use an AI, how do I make it my own? And we see people finding different tricks, like giving it context in the beginning of the visit, or today we have a way that if you edit the note and you can tell, click, click a button, this is my style. It kind of learns it, but it's not perfect yet. Um, that's something we hear a lot. Obviously something we hear a lot as well is that there's a lot of competition out there. So what's the difference? You know, there are more and more players coming up. We can dive into that. There are differences, there are similarities. Um, but yeah, I think overall people want to... So if we kind of take a step back, I truly believe after seeing my wife and I know that my wife and people are going to medicine go because they want to, you know, that's the, like truly it feels to me like it's their calling. It's not because it's a great career <laughs> and it's not easy. Um, and yeah, I really feel like people are looking for any help in kind of going back to basics and let me practice more and be an administrator less. Um, so it's not only AI Strive, it's how do I work with my EHR better? How do I improve my process? I think there are many things you can do aside of using AI for everything. Right. Um, so these are some topics that come up. Uh, okay, I don't know if it's... Sure. But so then tell me this. this. People are probably listening right now and if they haven't gone to your website yet, they're like, okay, I have a telehealth practice or I see people in person, whichever, it doesn't matter. So right. how does the software work? Are we essentially starting the software with each session and it's recording and then transcribing? Is that kind of how it goes? Or what does that look like for in-person sessions versus telehealth remote sessions? Yes, right. So our philosophy is you don't need to do anything differently and you don't need to learn anything. So Fred, it's actually the simplest app in the world. It's a button. It's a button <laughs> that you click, start, and then it becomes a stop button and you click stop. And of course, with out of technology in the background. Um, but yeah, the idea is when, if I come to see you, I come in, you ask me, hey, do you mind if I use this thing, HIPAA compliant, uh, you can talk about the language there. And once you get my, as a patient or client, the, the permission, you click start, you can forget about it. You practice the way, you know, kind of in a more, the, you know, the way we used to, <laughs> let's say. And then you, play, you press press end. That's all you need to do is two clicks of a button and informing your uh, patient or client. And and then, then you get the node. It's today it's in a soap structure, but it's very flexible. So it captures everything you you probably want. Um, and it's very simple. You can copy paste. And that's the idea. The idea is really to just allow free to listen to the encounter like a human scribe and document for you. That's it. You put it in the HR and you're done. We can talk about the advanced things like how do we customize it? How do we make it more your own? But that's also very 
very simple. And I should add one more thing. I think that in this philosophy of it requires you nothing of you to, to learn or no effort. There's also a free trial. So anybody can come into our website, as we mentioned, free.ai, try it out. You like it, great. You don't like it, great as well. Just give us feedback so we can make you like it in the future. And yeah, it's truly very, very simple. That was the, it's, it's the number one guideline when I just started coming up with it. You know, my wife, number one thing was Gabby. She said, keep it simple. Nobody wants trading. Nobody wants, just keep it simple. Doesn't it, 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 it can be simple. Right. Yeah, I think keeping it simple is is the best way because nobody wants one more thing they have to learn or one more thing they have to figure out or train their administrative staff on or any of that. They just want to go know, I'm set it and forget it. I'm, I'm very. Connected. I live in Santa Rosa, California. I'm very connected to the kind of health community here. I just have a lot of friends, and one of the clinics transitioned to Epic. Two years process. Everybody hates it. We all understand why, but everybody hates it. Not that, just the, you know, just how it works. Um, they literally went bankrupt that they had to fire like people to kind of keep, you know, keep the thing in the, the clinic um, alive. Uh, so nobody wants that experience. We're trying to, in some way, we're trying to be the anti antithesis of HRs. As complex they are, we're going to be simple. As demanding they are of your time and clicks, we want to be the, the opposite. And... Again, I don't blame them. If I built an EHR four years ago, it would have been the same. Um, it's very impressive and good for healthcare, but now there's an opportunity to take that value and make it and remove all the burden and chores that it creates for clinicians. Not only clinicians, but I mean, everybody around healthcare are working for the EHR. That's the, that's our master. Right. Yeah, that's that's so true. I, I, I like this vision a lot. So, and it also sounds like, and I, I know this will probably be a question that comes up from people who are listening, like customer service tech support. It sounds like it's pretty available considering you're rushing home to answer and respond to things uh, when things are happening. Yeah, I would say I would say a few things. Okay, I'd start with the, <laughs> I love the real, I feel like over the last year, I accumulated some good stories. So when we just got started and Frida was starting to pick up, I was spending hours a day doing support and I want to do that, but I also need to, Sure. do other things um, in order to make the business better. And this guy reaches out to me on, on LinkedIn. Um, this guy, his name is Adozi. Um, never heard about him. And he sent me a message in, in Hebrew saying, both of my parents using Freed. It's the best thing ever. Tell me what you do in marketing. What I, I'm, I'm here for you. Let's talk. And at the, <laughs> at the bottom he wrote, I hope you can understand this. I use chat GPT to translate from English to Hebrew. So, you know, he was being witty. So I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm curious about this guy. Let's get on a call. So apparently he's a med student, med student, both parents are, are um, clinicians. And so he heard about free for, from them. And I told him that, yeah, I have now hundreds of people using this product every day and I need help with support. And the guy, the same day, not the next day, same day, just comes in, starting to help out. Of course, hired him immediately. And the amazing thing is done is he used an AI, AI to automate our support. So today it seems now we have another employee it's helping, but supporting thousands of clinicians with very quick and helpful support that he built on top of AI. So this AI and very smart. He knows everything about freedom, but um, so very cool. Again, shows the power of AI, not just to solve this problem, but to build a more effective, better support, for example. Um, but kind of beyond that story, yeah, truly really our number one value, and we don't have too many values, is to be clinician focused. That's what I'm, that's what's important for me. And honestly, one of my biggest concerns would be as we grow the team, how do we remain, you know, intensely clinician focused? And a big part of it is support. If you look at our testimonials, it's almost always. What a great product, game changing. I love it. The support is so great. You know, like I got, I asked for some support and I got it immediately. Um, and it's really hard. It's pretty hard that this kind of larger numbers to maintain that level. Um, so we're kind of investing a lot in that too. And yeah, it's important. I think that clinicians deserve to get an answer, you know, immediately, especially with a um, tool that they get used to and, and depend on. Um, totally. Yeah. So, bottom line, we're, we're doing our best to be very, very responsive and then quickly. Got it. I love that. Love hearing that too. Um, a question that's on my mind. 
is there a difference? And I, you know, I obviously could answer this by looking through the website, but since I have you here, do we have differences in price points for solo clinicians and practitioners versus groups and organizations? Yeah, so we're tinkering with the pricing. Again, really the philosophy is to be affordable while we want to build a good yep. business so we can serve clinicians for many, many years to come. Uh, so as an example, we started at 199. We understood that, hey, this is pretty high and we do have margins to play. We weren't sure about the margins yet. So we cut it in half, half to 99. Um, but kind of to answer the question. So today, free it for an individual seat is $99 a month. We do for residents and students 50% off. Also in other cases, we provide discounts if usually people ask for a good reason. Um, uh, and then for groups, we do have discounts. It depends on the, the size and just what we can do practically. Um, sure. But it could be between 10%, 25%, sometimes more, depending on the size and maybe those part-time workers. Um, but we also, we try to be very, as flexible as we can with what works for you. Do you need a month to pilot this first? Go ahead, let's just do it. Um, uh, yeah, so that's the passing, pa pricing. We also have an annual plan that is 10% off and we're also thinking of reducing this price. By the way, something I should say, if people are thinking of waiting for the price to reduct. Every time we reduce the price, we also do it for existing customers, of course. Um, I love that. Yeah, but that's the pricing today, very simple, 99 a month. And I do aim as AI becomes more commoditized and cheaper to also reduce reduce the price further. Wow. Well, you yeah. know, there's also there's this mentality when it's like this sounds too good to be true. It's what I recommend everyone doing who's listening. Sign up for the free trial. Like sign it up, sign up and check it out. I'm gonna sign my clinicians up as soon as I get off this call for our group practice because I think it'll just make their lives easier. So one, I want to just thank you for coming on and sharing this information. I know we've, I've rescheduled on you like 10 times and I'm really glad that we actually made this happen because this is one of those conversations that feels really valuable, not just for myself, but for the people who listen to this podcast. Um, do you mind sharing a little bit about where people can find you guys? And if you, I think you mentioned a code potentially for listeners uh, to this episode. Yes. So first we'd love anybody to try us out, of course. For free. The website is freed, freed.ai, free.ai. There's a free trial. And if you decide to subscribe for your listeners, uh, we have a code for $50 off the first month. So it's private. So P R I V A T E 50, private 50. And yeah, try it out. And literally, my only request is that give us feedback. Read all of it. We, we we really prioritize what we do based on it. And I know it's not perfect for everyone. It's not perfect yet for anyone. Um, but really, I want us to learn how to become the best at this and serve you know, every every clinician that we can. Uh, yeah, free, free.ai. Perfect. All of that information will be in the show notes, including the code private city, so that you can get that half off uh, discount if you do decide to uh, continue on for that first month. So thank you so much for coming on and making the time and sharing this and sharing your creation with the world. Sounds like it's life-changing for our profession and the medical profession as well. And I hope to collaborate uh, in future opportunities as, as we go forward too. Thank you. Thank you, Zoran. And thank you for what you're doing and uh, uh, making some, some time for me. I appreciate it. Not a problem. And to everyone listening to the All Things Private Practice podcast, new episodes are out every single Saturday on all major platforms and YouTube. Like, download, subscribe, and share. Adapt yourself. Do it anyway, and we'll see you next week.